Hello and welcome to Madden Science. In today's video we're going to solve a number of problems having to do with momentum. Like always, let's have out our problem solving strategies card. For these problems though, and for the concept of momentum, we're going to add in three new formulas. The first is that momentum equals mass times velocity. We can expand that out to include impulse where impulse equals mass times the change in velocity, or the change in momentum. And impulse is force times time. Here's a few examples of impulse that we covered in our other momentum video. Our second set of equations for our second two problems will deal with collisions. When it comes to collisions, you got two different types the kind where the objects collide and bounce off each other, that's elastic. Or the kind where the two objects stick together after the crash, that is an inelastic collision. When looking at momentum, the problem's helpful to look back to our text and momentum and what its formula is and definition is. It goes along with impulse and its formula F delta T equals m delta v, our understanding of conservation momentum, and its formula, inelastic and elastic collisions. Our first formula reads, a car with a mass of 100 kilograms moves at 10 meters per second. What force is needed to stop the car in five seconds? We want to label it first. It's mass, velocity, the force needed. That stop is important. It means that the end of the problem has the car halting, it's going zero. So a mass of a thousand kilograms, there's our velocity, our stop at the end reminds us ooh, if that's the final velocity then we need to relabel the initial velocity. Formula of force times time equals mass times change of velocity. We can divide both sides by t. We substitute final velocity minus initial for our change in velocity That'll give us negative 10 times 1,000 divided by 5 is negative 2,000 newtons. Problem 2A. Again, keep in mind your problem solving strategies. We're labeling two silly humans, 45 kilograms each. They're going the same velocities. We can label those and see what's going to happen in this problem. Starting to draw it here, same size, different colors. And this is what that collision looks like in a computer simulation. Now this is how you feel momentum. Faster, faster, faster! <laughs> you see that in real life and in the simulation in the problem. The velocities come in, negative 2 and positive 2, and they get flip-flopped. In the second problem for an elastic collision, we make it a little bit more complex. 20 kilogram ball going 2 meters per second, 40 kilogram ball going 4 meters per second. Head-on collision. When that happens, the bigger ball, 40 kilogram ball, comes to a stop. So its second velocity is zero. We're wondering how fast is the other smaller 20 kilogram ball going. So that's velocity one final. We draw them up over here, label them, their two masses, their initial velocities. You can see them as vectors, difference in size. Now it's important to note coming up that these two and four meter per second velocities are in opposite direction. We're going to write down the formula for conservation of momentum for an elastic collision. So a collision where the two objects bounce off of each other and keep going. Seeing as the second ball stops, its momentum at the end is zero. We can divide both sides by the mass of the first ball. We then get 20 times 2 plus 40 times negative 4. We're going to say that it's moving in the negative direction. Divided by the mass of the first one, 20. So negative 120 divided by 20 is negative 6 meters per second. Here's proof that we did it right. The next inelastic collision is similar to one in the book. 
but this time it's with a seahawk grabbing a fish. Wonder what that looks like in real life. Our problem of 5 kilogram Seahawk flying at 10 meters per second swoops down and snags up a 5 kilogram fish, so pretty big, that was at rest in the water. What's their velocity after the catch? Let's draw this guy up while we think about the problem. Alright, that's more like it, a real Seahawk. Maybe not the scale. Its mass is 5 kilograms. It's going 10 meters per second. The mass of the fish is also 5 kilograms. Pretty big. It's not moving, so its velocity is 0. We want to know how fast you're going after the collision. The formula for an inelastic collision for conservation momentum is shown there. We're looking for the second velocity at the end, final, combined. We can divide both sides by their combined masses. That gives us 5 times 10 plus a 0 because the fish is not moving, divided by their combined 5 plus 5. So 50 divided by 10 is 5 meters per second. There you have it. Conservation momentum and the Seahawks. <laughs>